the skip. The eight-yard skip can carry a staggering eight of Her Majesty's metric tons. That's the equivalent of 160 barrows of rubbish new build soil. Skips on every building site. Tommy, Tommy, Tommy. Oh, we're filming. Sorry. Skips! Skip! No, 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 no. We've, we've done that last week, mate. We're, no gimmicks this time. No gimmicks? No gimmicks then, no gimmicks. So, welcome to Follow the Project. This is eight days into our current project and in that eight days we've had everything to contend with. We've had weather issues, we've had snow in May, despite the glorious weather now. A week or so ago, we had snow, rain, cold weather, then we had deliveries going missing, deliveries not turning up, materials in short supply. So, with all those excuses in the bag, let's go and have a look at what eight days progress looks like. Fresh for those of you who haven't seen part one, what is it we're actually building? Well, building a garden and we've worked with a client in order to realise their vision of their new home and their new garden. They want to be able to create a fusion of indoor and outdoor spaces and they want to bring in those precious pollinators and they also want to bring in the birds as well. So we've got ample spaces of planting here and one new area of planting which wasn't in the original concept, I'll throw the, the concepts up in a second, because we found the world's biggest footing for the world's smallest wall. Now, if you remember in the first video, we had this really ugly red engineer brick wall here. It's now clad with those horizontal battens, giving it quite a contemporary look. And it's making the garden feel a little bit more elongated, wider, a bit like my waistline. In order to create a dramatic backdrop for this new area of planting here, we're gonna paint this black. That's what hopefully really accentuate these oak copings that we've used. Now, everything we've done on this project is trying to work in with the kind of robust chunkiness of these posts. I mentioned this in the previous video, but we've got some really good, strong aesthetics from those, and we want to kind of replicate that theme through. So we've gone for the oak sleepers, both on a higher and a lower tier, and then these skeleton frames here of raised beds will also be clad and finished with an oak coping. Now, I know the purists out there will be saying, you've created a raised planting bed using timber. Now, obviously we want to make sure the client gets their vision and gets as much gardening as possible, but they don't want to spend too much, so we're trying to work within the framework of budget parameters. That's why we've opted for the tantalized sleepers. These again will be clad in the front. Before we clad them, we'll put a textile membrane across the front. That'll save painting it. It will also be a breathable membrane. Then we will clad this with the horizontal battens, and again, everything's gonna be painted black. So this black will pop against the green of the lawn, which is what this hollow here is going to be. And then we can flood this with a variety of herbaceous, perennials, and architectural plantings. So we've already talked about the ideas of maybe using some box globes in order to create some box clouds. We can have some verbena borianas. I always get that word wrong. Verbena bon... How do you, you're not even a gardener. How did you say it? I edited the video. <laughs> tall architectural structure, purple plumes at the top, that kind of translucent screen to this, which has grown from the original design. Now this is an area which is kind of hybrid patio and path. The reason we now have these pockets of planting where the Himalayan birch is going is because we can't plant them where the footing was, so we've had to create individual tree pits. So it gives us quite a nice walk through into the main patio space here. You're gonna get this subtle foliage, which is gonna create a bit of natural screening. It's also gonna create height. And the reason why we want the height is because we wanna get the birds into the garden as well. Eventually the client's going to cut off these lower limbs and start training the plant out. So any planting that we put back here isn't eclipsed, but we still get that wonderful display of white textural bark. And then we're not masking whatever planting, and herbaceous planting we put in the back here. I don't know if you caught a glimpse, we've also got a lighting system going in here. So that lighting will accentuate the garden and give a bit more atmosphere. I'm a big fan of outdoor lighting. I don't want it to be too ostentatious. We don't want it to look like mission control on launch day. We just want it to have a kind of subtle kind of Elegance and harmony, very poetic words. We just want it to look nice. And that's when it does come into play. We want it to look nice at the very end of the day when the clients are still out here on those late summer days. And also in the winter months, once this has shed all its foliage, it's a great way to uplight the kind of skeletal look of the plant. I love seeing the, the kind of canopy laid bare, underlit in those winter months. It's a great backdrop when you're looking out at it from the house. I mentioned the raised beds, enough room in here for plenty of planting. And 
Again, we want to create form, height, shape, and color and atmosphere using our planting. But the criticals are what we don't see. It's the stuff underground. You know, I keep banging this drum. It's all about the importance of the quality of your soil and the framework of your planting. Firstly, we've got some free draining material in here. We've got some 40 millimeter clean limestone. Then we're gonna build it up in layers of compost and topsoil as well. Give free draining, but well balanced topsoil. And this area here is gonna look after itself pretty nicely as well. Semi-shade here, so we want to make sure that we get as much colour in front of this wall because it'll get, be a quite a nice accent to whatever we put in front of it but just staring out on a big brick wall is about as interesting as listening to me sometimes so we want to spark it up we're going to have some hydrangea petiralis another one of my favorites so that's a climbing hydrangea really beautiful plant does well in areas of semi-shade and pretty much any soil condition if you've got clay hydrangea is a real banker if you've got clay soil because it will look after itself we maybe flood this undergrowing area with things like your grasses put a few hookah in there for some texture and some color and pops of foliage going in we wax lyrical about the amelanchia we've moved it from that corner thanks to that footing we're going to bring it into this area here just to create a bit more privacy and again a bit more height in the garden and animation at height but the value of that height means that we're going to get areas for the birds to perch on well, i hope you've enjoyed this loquacious tour of our current project i actually find this part of the project the most satisfying because we've got the form we've got the structure we just get to those flashes of color and the finesse at the end it also means i get to go plant shopping with the client as well which is my favorite part of the project um, Hopefully next time you see it, it'll look like a garden. But in the interim, if you want to find out any more about us, you can find our website somewhere on the screen. Hide it, hide it somewhere, Paul. Hide it, keep looking, it's on there somewhere. And also you can check the link out at the end of the video as well. Don't forget, if you've enjoyed the video, if you've got any questions about what it is we're doing, if you've got any questions at home, perhaps you've got a horticultural horror show going on and you want some tips, don't forget you can always shout me in the comment section below. I've That's... got a question, I've got a question. You've got a question. What's that for? Oh, uh, sorry, I should tidy that up. Actually, that'd be a fine looking palette. For what? I've got an idea. Tommy. Tommy, no. No. No gimmicks, Tommy. Blow the sails, matey. Come on. Fire the torpedoes. Shoot the the other thing, the gun, the cannon, the cannon. That's it. Yeah. Tommy, Tommy, Shoot. Tommy, Tommy. What what is this? Well, you've heard of a power ship. This is a pallet ship, matey. Oh, it's built out of pallets. That's yeah. Because cool. we're going to do a whole series of things you can make out of pallets over the summer holidays. Oh, well, that makes sense then. All right. And the makeup? Well, you can't blame my mate for trying, can you? She'd be a fine vessel, made out of pallets, sourced from a skip, skip, skip. <laughs>